Welcome to Unit 4, Section 2. Today we're talking about writing equations in point-slope form. So this is a different form than what we talked about yesterday. That was slope-intercept. And today is point-slope. So the two things that you need are a point, and we call that x1, y1. That's a coordinate. And then you're also going to need the slope. All right, so the point-slope form takes on this format here, y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. So you will see that y sub 1, the x sub 1, and the m, those values will all get substituted into the point slope form, and that will give you the equation of a line. This is the equation of a line, and it has a slope m and passes through the point x1 comma y sub 1. All right, let's do some examples here. We want to write an equation of each of the following lines with the given point and the slope, and you're gonna write them in point-slope form. So this is also kind of known as like lazy man's form here, uh, or lazy person's form, because you literally just have to point the, uh, plug the point in and the slope, and you got your equation. So we got y minus y sub one. Now y sub one is my three right here, is equal to my slope of one-fourth x minus x sub one. So if it's minus a negative 8, we actually are going to simplify that. We'll change that. It'll become y minus 3 equals 1 fourth x. Minus a negative is x plus 8. And that's it. You are done. This is the equation in point-slope format. Isn't that nice? Simple. All right, let's try another one. we got a line that passes through the point 4, 0. It has a slope of negative 2 thirds. All right, we're going to substitute in our y sub 1, which is 0, and that's equal to my slope of negative 2 thirds, and now I have x minus 4. And that's it. You're done. Woohoo! In example 2, we're going to write an equation in slope intercept form. Now we'll say, be careful, they've changed it up on you now. They want it in slope intercept form instead of point slope form. So we're going to first start off by finding the slope of the line, and then we're going to use the slope in one point to write the equation in point-slope form, and then we are going to simplify our equation. That means we're going to solve it for y so that it falls into this slope-intercept form. Well, let's see what we mean here. In this first example, we're going to start off by finding our slope by using our slope formula. We've got our change in y, which is 2 minus a negative 2, divided by our change in our x, which is 1 minus 3. And that slope comes out to be 4 over negative 2, and that simplifies to negative 2. All right, now we're going to choose one of our points, such as this point right here, 1 comma 2. And we're going to substitute it into our point slope form, y minus our y sub 1, which is 2, is equal to our slope of negative 2 times x minus x of 1, which was 1. So here's my point, 1, 2, that got substituted in. And I found my slope of negative 2, that got substituted in. Here's my equation in point-slope form. However, I don't want to leave it in point-slope form. I want to write it in slope-intercept. So I'm going to distribute my negative 2, and I'm going to add over my negative 2. So here's what we get, y minus 2 is equal to negative 2x plus 2. That's what I get when I multiply a negative 2 to a negative 1. And now I'm going to add this 2 over to the right side. And my final equation is y equals negative 2x plus 4. And there it is in slope-intercept form. All right, let's try the same thing with example b, starting off by calculating our slope. So we have 4 minus 3, that's the change in my y coordinates, over 6 minus 3, there's a change in my x coordinates. So 4 minus 3 is 1, 6 minus 3 is 3. I have a slope of positive 1 third. Next, let's choose the point 6, 4 as our x sub 1 and y sub 1. So we'll write y minus 4 is equal to my slope of 1 third times x minus x sub 1. All right, we need to distribute our 1 third. That gives me y minus 4 equals 1 third x. 1 third of a negative 6 is negative 2. If 
finally we're going to add 4 to the right side and we get y by itself so we have y equals 1 third x plus 2 and here is the equation of this line that passes through the points 3 3 and 6 4 it has a slope of 1 third and it has a y-intercept of positive 2. All right, flipping the page over, we see once again the ever-important point-slope form. y minus y sub 1 equals m times the quantity of x minus x sub 1. Well, we want to write an equation in point-slope form again for the given function values. Well, now they're going to give you points in uh, function notation. So remember this f of 4 equals negative 2 really represents an x value of 4 and a y value of negative 2. This number here inside our parentheses is our input, it's our x value, and then the whole thing f of 4 equals negative 2, that whole thing is our output or our y value. And that means this f of 8 equals 4 is the point 0.84. All right, now it becomes just like previous problems where we're going to start off by finding our slope. So we'll say y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that gives us a 6 over 4. So now a slope of 3 halves. All right, once we have our slope, we're going to choose one of our two points. Oh, let's just choose this point here, 8, 4. We might as well deal with two positive numbers rather than a positive and a negative. So we'll write y minus 4 is equal to 3 halves x minus 8. Now we are done. Because remember, we want to write it in point slope form. Point slope form, we just substitute in our slope and our point, and we're done. Yay! All right, I'd like for you to pause the video and try example B here on your own. All right, let's move on to example four. Your student council is ordering customized foam hands to promote school spirit. The table below shows the total cost of ordering different numbers of foam hands. Determine the total cost of ordering 150 foam hands. So you can see that uh, we have four foam hands, six foam hands, eight foam hands, ten foam hands, and then we have the total cost of foam hands. And you can see that as we increase by uh, the same increments here, we're going up by four to six to eight to ten, we're going up by positive twos, so that's my, my change in my uh, independent variable, then my change in my dependent variable is going up by the same amount as well. In other words, this is forming a linear equation or a linear function. And because it's forming a linear equation, we can find the slope. So we'll find the slope by taking the change in our y values over the change in our x values. Now, it doesn't matter which two points we pick here. We're just going to choose the first two ordered pairs. All right? And uh, we'll write them as ordered pairs. For four foam hands, the cost is $51 and, oops, 40 cents. And then for six foam hands, our cost is $57.10. So finding slope, we'll do our uh, change in our y values over the change in our x values. And we will come up with our slope. In this case, it's $5.70 over two foam hands. So that means the cost per foam hand is $2.85. All right, once we found our slope, now we can plug it into a point slope form. And so we'll say this as a y minus 51.40 is equal to the slope, $2.85, times x minus our uh, x value at that point, which was 4. All right, so we just chose that first point, and we wrote it out in point slope form. Now, we can simplify this equation if we'd like. But uh, the question is asking us to determine the total cost of ordering 150 foam hands. In other words, can you find out the value of y when x is equal to 150? So what uh, we're going to do here is we're going to actually take this 150 and we're going to substitute it in for x and solve for y. So we get y equals 51.40 is equal to $2 
85 cents times 150 minus 4. All right, I'm going to pause the video, or actually, I'm going to ask you, you're going to pause the video, to pause the video and go ahead and solve this for Y and see what you come up with for the total cost of 150 foam hands. Did you come up with $467.50? If so, great job. We'll see you tomorrow in class.